In this video, I'm sharing three super useful GarageBand for Mac tips. We'll go over how to work with the score view, talk about the best way to set up a new project, and I'll show you how to drastically speed up your music making workflow. Okay, first off, select the software instrument track whose notes you want to edit in the score view or save as sheet music. Then open the editor window by either clicking on the editor icon in the top left of GarageBand's window, selecting show editor from the view tab in the toolbar, or by hitting the keyboard shortcut E. Then click the score tab. Any notes that are already present in your MIDI track will be displayed here in the form of musical notation. Changing the key of your project up here in the LCD will also change your sheet music. GarageBand's default key signature has no sharps or flats in it, for example, but if I change the key to A major, you can see three sharps are added next to the treble clef. Similarly, if I change the time signature, it will change here too. You can edit, add and remove notes in the score view the same way you can in the piano roll. If I click on this note to select it, I can then lengthen or shorten the note by dragging and dropping. With a note selected, I can hit delete on my typing keyboard to delete it. And if I hold the command button on my typing keyboard, my pointer changes to the pencil tool and I'm able to add notes here as well. It's really interesting to switch back and forth between the score tab and the piano roll to see how these changes that you've made translate. When you're ready to export or print your musical score, head to File in GarageBand's toolbar and select Print. From here you can choose a printer that's on your network and print your notation directly, or if you click on the PDF drop down menu, you can choose to save your notation in PDF format and then attach it to an email or save it to iCloud Drive, for example, amongst other things. When you open it, GarageBand will usually open the last project you were working on, but the very first time that you open GarageBand on macOS, you'll see the new project window. To get back to the new project window from inside GarageBand itself, hit File in the toolbar at the top of the screen and then select New. You have several options available to you here. The New Project tab allows you to select the Empty Project option. This will open a fresh GarageBand project where you can start from scratch. Personally, I will start a new project this way 99.9% .9 of the time. The recent tab will display the last 10 projects that you've worked on. The Learn to Play and Lesson Store tabs let you dive into dozens of high quality instruments and artist tutorials. Apple made all of these lessons free a wee while back, so if you can look past the late 2000s slash early 2010s fashion and song choices, it's definitely worth taking a look at what's on offer here. And the project template folder contains six projects tailor made to get you started with a particular genre quickly. The amp collection template has multiple audio tracks with GarageBand's amp and pedal board effects preloaded, for example, while the electronic project has several EDM inspired software instrument MIDI tracks set up and ready to go. 
These templates are helpful if you want to jump in and get a taste of the kind of sounds and instruments that GarageBand offers, but I would probably recommend selecting the empty project option found in the new project tab and building your own project from scratch most of the time. The details menu at the bottom of the window allows you to edit the settings of your project. To set the project tempo, drag the tempo slider or enter a tempo value in the tempo field or click the tap tempo button several times to set your tempo manually. To set the project key, choose a key from the key signature pop-up menu, then click major or minor. To set the project time signature, click the arrows to change the selected number or double click the time signature and enter a new time signature value. To set the audio input, choose an input source from the audio input pop-up menu. This is for audio tracks only though. To set the audio output, choose an output device from the audio output pop-up menu. When you're ready to go, hit choose and your brand new GarageBand project will open and you can dive in and get started. Using the keys of your typing keyboard, you can control almost every aspect of GarageBand's interface without laying a finger on your mouse or trackpad. Getting to grips with the keyboard shortcuts hidden in GarageBand will help speed up your workflow no end. Memorising the whole lot in one sitting is maybe a bit of a tall order, there are over 70 of them in total. So here's a selection of the ones I find most useful and the ones I use the most to get you started. Alright, some basic keyboard shortcuts you'll want to master first are the spacebar, it starts and stops playback. The return key goes to the beginning of the project. The S key solos the currently selected track. The M key mutes the currently selected track. Pressing the command and Z or Z key together undoes the last change that you made to your project. Pressing the command and the T key splits the selected region at the playhead's current position. Pressing the command and C keys together copies a selected region or regions and pressing the command and V keys together pastes your copied regions at the playhead's current position. The B key opens the smart controls for your currently selected track. The E key opens the editor window for your currently selected track. The O key opens or hides GarageBand's loop browser. And pressing the command and S keys together will save your current project. Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you found this video helpful, please give that like button a good hard slap. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for even more really powerful GarageBand for Mac tips, watch this video next.